If you're familiar with the premise of Far Cry, then you know exactly what Far Cry 5 feels like. You'll engage in different styles of offensive conflict, attempt to tame the wild natural environment to your advantage, and slowly build a guerrilla resistance in the background. But for its fifth mainline entry, the series formula has undergone some very positive refinements, which make its core hook of exploring and engaging with volatile setting a more free-flowing and pleasant experience, one that lets you enjoy the sights and activities of its beautiful and interesting open world without too many overt distractions. The biggest change is that the series is finally confident enough to put you in charge of your own progression. After a brief orientation, the entirety of Hope County is immediately open for exploration. Three intimidatingly large regions surround your starting point, and you're given only a gentle suggestion of a good first destination. The moment when you're shown all the equally accessible possibilities and the furthest reaches of the map feels liberating. You may even be crippled by the choice, and that's a good problem to have. <gasps> To accompany this decision, Far Cry 5 now handles its story progression in a more free-form manner. The goal in each of the three regions is to earn enough resistance points to hit three milestones and subsequently have three encounters with three lieutenants of the Eden's Gate cult, with the ultimate goal of reaching their leader, Joseph Seed, the father. Each of these individuals runs a different facet of the God-fearing group, but their role in the story ultimately isn't as interesting as you might think, despite Far Cry 5's potential for a controversial and politically charged narrative. Completing story and side missions is the most efficient way to earn resistance points, but you can also viably achieve your goal by performing smaller tasks that you might stumble across during your journeys. This includes rescuing civilians in random encounters, finding and destroying cult property, and liberating cult outposts. Mechanically, it's a great player-friendly system that rewards you no matter what activities you decide to do or not do. But the reason why it feels so good in execution is because of how you discover these opportunities in the first place. With the exception of each region's hub area and the whereabouts of specialists, who are support characters with unique abilities, no points of interest are marked, and the practice of finding and scaling towers to populate your map with icons has been removed. Discovering points of interest can be achieved in a few ways. Physically stumbling upon a significant area will mark it on your map. Actively looking at wildlife road signs inform you of the fauna in that region. Finding notes, maps, and magazines in homes and other buildings can point you to a number of different things, including prepper stashes, which involve solving obscure environmental puzzles that can lead to money and gear. Simply running into a civilian might give you the chance to talk to them about the latest word on the grapevine, about an outpost, side quest, or even the location of a story quest giver. All of these elements work wonderfully together to create a style of larger progression that feels mostly organic. Things can start off a little broad, but you'll naturally make discoveries along the way that can lead you off in different directions. And since you usually don't have anything better going on, you can explore the distractions you might find with genuine curiosity, as opposed to because it was one of a dozen icons you arbitrarily picked as they stared at you from a minimap. In fact, there is no minimap, and it's one of the best things to happen to the series, as was also the case in Far Cry 2. There's a compass that helps you track your direction and will narrow down the general location of enemies and marked objectives, but there's nothing telling you about the specifics of an area. The lack of minimap allows you to see the trees in the forest, so to speak. You can focus on details in the world without distraction, and you can actively appreciate the stunning beauty of the natural environment and pay full attention to the intricate interior details in the homes and businesses you visit. The new freeform flow sits comfortably well with the most celebrated aspect of the Far Cry series, the capacity for you to engage with the game's conflicts in your own way, seeing what kinds of chance scenarios you stumble into, and attaining those water cooler tales about what happened next. There's also thankfully less of an emphasis on hunting. Selling animal skins is the most lucrative way to earn money for weapons and vehicles, but the series is finally past the point of needing to hunt specific creatures for the purposes of crafting upgrades. Another fantastic change involves the aforementioned specialists and the more generic guns for hire. They allow you to command the unique skills of one of many support buddies, adding another fun and dynamic element to your toolkit. 
Specialists provide a variety of options, from the humans that lay down covering fire with different weapons and vehicles, to the animals who can assist you in marking enemies and stealth takedowns. They're fantastic assets who can complement your skill set or fill in a necessary gap. You might recruit Tortured Archer Jess to give you a silent attack option, or tell the helicopter pilot Adelaide to fly in and provide suppressing fire and a distraction. Perk is also back, for better or worse. The AI that drives support characters sometimes makes poor decisions that puts them in harm's way, but in lieu of a co-op partner, specialists help bolster the series' propensity for emergent, fist-pumping hell yeah moments. And that's what Far Cry 5 is all about. Fluid and dynamic engagements that act as different canvases and let you use the game's variety of tools to finish the picture. At least, that's the case most of the time. There are a number of major story missions which are a lot more linear and depending on your patience, they can be intolerable. Once you've hit a milestone in liberating a region, the Eden's Gate Lieutenant in charge will capture you, whisking you away from the world no matter what you're doing. You'll escape each time, of course, and then plow through single-style corridor affairs until you escape or reach a boss fight to kill the lieutenant. These missions showcase some pretty stunning set pieces, but mechanically they're bland at best, featuring elementary stealth challenges, on-rails turret sequences, and monotonous platforming, among other scenarios. They're relatively brief, but they're semi-regular occurrences that pull you away from the world that makes Far Cry 5 great, and it's easy to hold that against them. What makes these missions more egregious are the prolonged, close-up encounters with the Seed family members upon capture. Joseph Seed and his lieutenants are nothing if not charismatic villains, and their performances are impressive. But every encounter you have with them is the same. You're restrained in some manner, and you can do nothing but watch them get all up in your face, preaching about topics that make sure you know just how evil they are, which becomes tiresome very quickly. <sighs> Questgiver characters are mostly extreme caricatures you'll either love or hate, but for the most part you're not asked to put much investment in their livelihood outside of the outrageous quests they give you. They'll send you on adventures that show you the goofy side of Far Cry, from hunting down alien turkeys for a mad scientist, or watching cows mate as Marvin Gaye's sexual healing plays. These missions feel more in line with the freewheeling spirit of Far Cry. The Seed Family missions ultimately aren't an enormous detraction, but there are additional gripes. Weapons and vehicles that have the capacity to be purchased with real-world money take prominent positions in every shop menu, and their connection to an online storefront also seems to increase the loading time of these menus by a few beats, which is annoying if all you want to do is swap weapons. And despite Far Cry 5's unquestionably relevant, religiously and politically volatile setting, the game doesn't do or say anything interesting with it beyond a few hammy jabs here and there. It's unchallenging satire, and for all the attention paid to the Seed family, you'd expect there to be something more. And we have to prove that we can serve God, no matter what he asks. But there are so many more simple experiential joys to be found in Far Cry 5. The exhilarating feel of jumping off a mountain and flying through the skies in a wingsuit. The idle banter between your specialists. It's like my thoughts come out of your mouth, but in like a lady voice, not like my herc voice. Fishing in one of the many rivers or lakes for hours on end. Petting your animal companions. Flying a plane for the first time in the series. The tight and precise gunplay. The relaxing feeling of cruising down a picturesque highway in a 70s muscle car, listening to the great selection of classic rock and country tunes on the radio. If you'd rather experience this with someone who's a little more autonomous, or you prefer your world to be a little more bonkers, Far Cry 5 also includes a couple of major features, two-player online co-op for the campaign and Far Cry Arcade. Co-op has a few restrictions, being unable to save your mission progress unless you're the host is a disappointing one, but if you're happy to simply be that extra gun for hire, there's a lot of joy to be found in sharing Far Cry's exciting impromptu moments because you have someone to rave about it with immediately afterwards. Arcade has the game's custom map editor, allowing you to build and play your own single-player, co-op, or competitive multiplayer maps, or play maps uploaded by the rest of the community. 
While the process of jumping into custom apps requires a lot of patience to cater for their lengthy download and loading times, Arcade provides the potential for a diverse array of levels and game modes that are far removed from the tone and rules of the main game. Although the Hope County denizen that pimps Far Cry Arcade deserves a mention as one of the most irritating characters in the game. Check it out! This game lets you build your own levels! The editor itself is robust and the asset library is generous, offering resources from other Ubisoft games on top of the ones in the Far Cry series. It'll take you some time to get familiar with it, but with diligence it's obvious that the results can be amazing. Levels created by Ubisoft are a prime example of how interesting they can be, but there are a lot of bland examples out there too. It's easy to weed out the duds when you're picking and choosing single player levels, but when it comes to multiplayer you leave some of that up to chance. Three players in a multiplayer lobby are selected to pick an upcoming map, with the rest of the lobby voting between them and a server selected option. There are already some wonderful PvP maps, but there are also a fair share of ugly empty maps with poorly filled out modifiers. It's great to see people experimenting, but you're not required to publish any of your work, so it's a little annoying. Post match, you're asked to like or dislike a map that will help with ratings, so we're hopeful that after a while the cream will float to the top. Despite some brief irritations and missed opportunities with its narrative, spending time in the world of Hope County remains absolutely delightful. Far Cry 5 boasts a wonderfully harmonious flow to its adventure, with its smart changes to exploration, discovery and progression distinctly bolstering the enjoyment of creatively engaging and experimenting with its spectacular open world.